craft store a couple of years ago. It wasn't being used, so I decided this would be a perfect use for it. So I cleaned it up and decided to paint it with bare tide pools. This is the same color that my drawer is on the inside. So I let it dry and did a second coat. I picked up some felt at the craft store. This is only 39 cents a piece, very inexpensive. So I'm gonna be measuring it out to fit inside my tray. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trace it so I know how much to cut off and then just trim it to the size that you need. After I trim the first piece, I use that as my pattern for all the others so I know what size to trim them all down to. With all of my felt trimmed down to size, I roll each of them up, keeping them as even as possible, and then placing them into the tray. And continue doing that with all of the pieces of felt until you're done. I found this fabric at my local fabric mart and I just loved it. I thought it was gray and white, but as it turns out, I was looking at the underside of it. It's actually black and white striped, but I decided that I like the gray side better. So I'm going to be using this as my front. So I just measure out how much fabric I'm going to need and I'm going to cut the fabric to three times the length of my tray. That way I'm sure to have enough and it won't be short. I'm also going to trim these strings off. This fabric is really stringy. Since the fabric I chose is kind of a polyester satin sort of fabric, if you think of ribbon, that's kind of what it's like. It's really prone to fraying and getting strings. So I'm using my lighter to seal the edges, and this is just going to guarantee that I have a nice clean edge and no strings later on. Now it's time to get our fabric into place, so I'm just going to pull out one of the pieces of felt and lay the end of my fabric down inside the tray. Place my felt back over it. This helps lock in the end while we're working with the fabric. I'm going to flip the fabric over and making sure to pull from the loose end of the fabric where the slack is, I'm going to press the fabric down in between each of the rolls of felt. I'm also making sure to press the fabric all the way down to the bottom of the tray as I go. So I'm continuing on to the end and tucking that last end of the fabric down on the side and now you're ready to place your rings in your new ring display. some foam. I found this inexpensive foam at Walmart. It was a little over seven dollars and it comes in a pack of four. These are one inch pieces so this is going to be perfect for what we're going to be doing. So I'm just kind of curling over my foam just deciding what size I want to make this display and then I'm going to cut out the piece that I need. Now I'm checking to see how it's going to sit. Now see these pointy parts we're going to need to trim those down. So I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off those bottom corners because I want it to be a little more slanted like this because we're going to have it sitting on a flat surface. This is a piece of foam board that I had left over from a previous project. I'm going to use this as my flat surface that my foam is going to connect to. So I cut the piece of foam board down to size so it's the same size as my piece of foam that I'm going to be working with. For fabric, I'm using this silver lame, but you have to be really careful with it because it shows every little bump and groove. So I'm being very gentle. Also, you want to be careful not to scratch it because it scratches easily. But it was just so pretty and fun, I couldn't resist it. So I'm cutting out a large piece, enough to be able to wrap all the way around and have plenty to spare. I can always trim it later. So I have my piece of fabric, my piece of foam, and my piece of foam board. And now we are outside. I'm going to be using my 3M spray adhesive. And I'm just going to shake that up and spray it onto my foam board. And once it's sprayed just on one side, I'm going to place my foam down on top of it, the ends of the foam. And I'm just kind of bending it. And as you can see, I'm just pressing the edges of it down. And that's where we trimmed it because that's where we wanted it to be able to stay flat. Now see there's a little extra piece of the foam board there. I'm just going to trim that off to make sure it's the exact same size as my foam. And now I'm going to spray the foam all around the top with my spray adhesive. And we're going to place the fabric over the top of it. I'm removing my glove because I want to be able to touch the fabric without getting stuck to it. And that spray adhesive is so sticky. So even just kept trying to get the fabric down uh, can be a little bit tricky, especially with the lame, since it shows every little bump. But I'm just going to smooth it out gently. And then I'm going to use a little spray adhesive on the ends. And I'm going to be pleating the fabric over the ends. So just try to create a kind of a pretty pleat, just whatever looks good to your eye. So I'm just sort of playing with it and seeing what kind of looks good. So once I'm happy with how the pleats look, I just kind of press it down along the edge and then repeat on the other side. So I'm using my spray adhesive and then pulling the fabric taut and pulling it down over the side and just kind of creating those pleats. 
and pulling it tight and pressing right along the bottom edge. I'm going to trim off any of the excess. Now I'm using my spray adhesive to spray on the bottom of the display and I'm going to be pulling the fabric taut. Now you could actually trim off the fabric but I'm just going to go ahead and just pull it over the bottom as well. And now I'm spraying that side and I'm going to pull the other side over it. Just trying to get it as taut as possible. And then pulling it tight and smoothing out those wrinkles. Now I'm trimming off that last bit of excess fabric and smoothing that final edge down. To give the display a more finished feel, I'm going to use a piece of scrapbook paper and I'm tracing out a piece that's slightly smaller than my actual display. So I'm just going to cut that out and I'm going to spray it with spray adhesive just on one side and I'm going to place that directly over the center of the bottom of my display. Even though no one actually sees the bottom of the display, I'll know it's there and looking a little bit cleaner than before. To finish it off, I'm going to use this nail head trim. These are decorative nails. I got them at the fabric store. So the foam board that's going across the very bottom, I'm pressing these in into the side of that foam board. And so I'm just kind of eyeballing it, just lining them up as best I can. But the foam board, since it's a nice straight line, it pretty much guides you as you go. So it's pretty easy to get these in straight. So I'm just going to finish that off and we are done. Look at how pretty that looks. I love how it turned out. I like the pleats on the side and I love that nail head trim. display I'm starting with a piece of foam board and I'm just tracing it out to the size that I want and then I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to place it over the edge of a flat surface I'm just using this table I'm going to hold it down very firm and I'm bending the edge so basically it's going to have like about a one inch edge that's bent on it just like that I'm going to use the same gray and white stripe fabric as I used for my ring display because I want them to match so I'm just tracing out a piece of fabric that's slightly larger than my piece of foam board. I want the fabric to be just large enough to be able to wrap the edges around the back side of the foam board. I'm also going to trim off this stringy edge and I'm going to use my lighter again to seal the edges because I don't want any fraying happening later on. I want nice clean edges. I'm going to use my spray adhesive to spray both sides of the foam board and I'm placing the top of my foam board onto the bottom of my fabric. And since I'm using stripes, I'm being very careful to line the stripes up so they're straight. And then go ahead and smooth out any wrinkles. And now I flip over the foam board and it's time to press the edges of the fabric into the back of the foam board. So I'm just smoothing out those edges and trying to keep them as clean looking as possible. And again, I'm going to use a piece of scrapbook paper to cover the back. So I'm just going to trace out a piece that's slightly smaller than my actual display size and go ahead and cut that out. And then I'm going to spray it with spray adhesive just on the back side. And I'm going to center it on the back of my display and press it down into place. And right at that bend on the foam board, I'm going to press that down real good because this paper will also help hold that bend in place and keep it a little bit more sturdy. I'm using the nail head trim. This is actually what's going to be holding the necklaces in place. So I start at one end and I'm pressing it in directly over where the bend is in the foam board. And so this way they're not poking through the back, they're actually going down into the bend. And it helps me to get these straight if I just do it symmetrically on the ends and the center and then finish off in between them just like that. And so now it's time to add the necklaces and we're done. that I built the displays for. I'm going to put them in one by one and we'll see how they all fit together. Hopefully they all fit. Hopefully I measured things right. So here's the ring display. Here's the necklaces. Next is the bracelets. Oh, I love this one. It's so fun. And then I've got a couple of empty spaces to fill. So I'm going to put this jewelry here. These are some special items that Michael has given to me over the years on our anniversaries. And then I have this vintage South American bracelet that my dad gave me many years ago. It's so cute. It has llamas on it. And then see this little spot back here? I'm going to take this little white jewelry box with my rose gold earrings, my hoop earrings, and I'm going to slip that right back in there. There was one little space left, so I cut out some scrapbook paper. I really like this color. And I just poked a few holes in it so I could put my studs in it, and I set those right there. 
And that's it. We are done with the jewelry drawer. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I really love the look of it. And I don't keep all of my jewelry in here, but I just wanted a place where I would have some of my jewelry that I like to wear often handy. That way it's easy to find and also some of my fine necklaces I can keep from getting tangled up. So this is a good way to keep them organized where I'm able to find everything that I like to wear all the time. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's projects. I know I had a blast making them and I'm always happy to share what DIY projects I'm up to. So if you like these kind of videos, definitely let me know and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.